if you're going to have premarital sex, you have to take one precaution. You must always wear a condom. Because if you don't, you'll die. And you'll be a dad. Do you want to be a dad? I don't think you do. And now you know. And knowing is half the battle. Hey guys, welcome to Mothman Jones Movie Reviews. I am John Maffio. We have new lighting in the studio. It's pretty sick. And today's movie that we will be reviewing is G.I. Joe Retaliation, the sequel to Rise of the Cobra. And this one stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson, DJ Cortrana, Adrian Palicki, Channing Tatum, and Bruce Willis. And the plot is this. There is an ambush attack at a G.I. Joe military camp and there are no survivors left to breathe, except for three, and that's the three central characters, Dwayne Rock Johnson, Adrian Palicki, and DJ Cortrana. And now they must stop the returning Cobra Commander and his army before they destroy the world with nuclear warfare. For those unfortunate souls who have seen Rise of Cobra, were you expecting much from this movie? Because I wasn't. I mean, it has The Rock, and he's one of my childhood heroes, but still, it's G.I. Joe. And if one must inquire the sacred question, is this better than Rise of Cobra? Yeah, it is. Does that mean it's a good movie, though? No. Let's get all the positive prospects out of the way. The action sequences, for the most part, are enjoyable and engaging, and everything involving Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, Jinx, and the Everest Mountains is incredible. That was the best part of the movie. It felt like a western, but with ninjas. You were left with the impression that they spent the most time on those sequences involving the ninjas, and quite frankly, that's sad. Even though the tone and the feel of this movie feels similar and consistent to the original movie, Rise of Cobra, it has more fun with the style, and if you've seen the original 1980s cartoon, I haven't really, but I watched some of it when I was younger, it remains faithful to that. And that includes everything, right down to the characters, the sets, the story, which there is no story, but it, it fits G.I. Joe. It's campy, it's cheesy, and it's over the top. If you grew up with the cartoons and you enjoy that type of action movie, then you'll certainly enjoy this one. And the look of Cobra Commander, who looks more faithful to his original cartoon adaption. He didn't sound like Cobra Commander from the cartoon show, but he did have a physically imposing look. The acting overall is serviceable, nobody is bad, nobody really sticks out as a sore thumb. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he's charismatic, he is charming, he's one of the best working action heroes in Hollywood today, and he's getting back on that grind. He carries this movie, he performs to the pinnacle of his capabilities with a weak script, and I commend him for that. And Adrienne Palicki, who is the female heroine for this movie. She's actually a pretty decent actress. She actually has kudos, she has chops. Despite the fact that for 85% of the movie she's exploited for her sexuality and her hotness, she is still a tough cookie. But I have to say, oh my god. Jeez, it's getting hot in here. And now for the descent into darkness. The structure of the story is really off. There's a consistent feeling of parallel editing, and it doesn't work in this movie. The whole movie just feels like it's rushing to get to the action sequences, which is the point, it's a G.I. Joe movie, but still, it's just not executed as well as it could have been. I mentioned before, but there's only one real action sequence that has integrity and is composed well, and that involves the ninjas. Everything else, there is an overall excess of shaky cam, unfortunately. Like I said before, this movie does have a lot of fun with the story and its characters, and I did have fun with it, I'm not gonna lie. But for the most part, the humor and the jokes that they try to execute in this movie, miss. It's like when Dick Cheney shot George W. Bush, only this time it's not that funny. There is a plethora of one-liners, and some of them are decent, but for the most part, you're watching them being said by these actors, and you're just like, ooh, ugh. Oh no! Oh. Ah. Ah. There is simply no focus and no sense of danger behind the anarchy of the villains and antagonists. Cobra Commander is extremely, disappointingly underwhelming as a villain. He looks cool, but he does 
literally nothing throughout the whole movie. And finally, for me at least, the ending left no feeling of satisfaction. I was left very hungry, and a lot was left to be desired. And not to spoil, but the actual ending of the movie is eerily similar to the original Transformers from 2007. Right down to the Linkin Park, what? Have I done music? Overall though, G.I. Joe Retaliation is a slight improvement over Rise of Cobra, but it's not saying much. It has fun with the material, and if you can go with the ride, you may enjoy the movie, but if you're not into that type of thing, you won't enjoy this movie. For all the reasons stated previously, G.I. Joe Retaliation is a Sam Worthington, a 2 out of 5. It's not the worst of the bunch, but it certainly could have been so much better. If you want to or have already seen G.I. Joe Retaliation, let me know anything about G.I. Joe in the comments down below. Please subscribe to Mothman Jones, like this video, and check out Facebook, Twitter, and We Live Film in the info box. I am John Maffio of Mothman Jones Movie Reviews, and I'm a computer! See you next time.